My brothers and sisters, the Quran, the duty that we have towards it is not just to recite it, not just to recite it, but it is to try and understand it, to implement it, to convey the message. A person was asking me, telling me, you know what, I cannot concentrate much in Salah. Can you give me a remedy? Concentration in Salah, you see Shaitan, Shaitan is a, an expert in his field. You know, he has a PhD in his field. Shaitan has a very high degree in his field. You know what he does? He knows that now you are trying to plug with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as you're standing in Salah and you say, Allahu Akbar, he comes to you and he says, Hey, your phone is going to ring just now. So now you're worried about your phone ringing. Then he says, you know, it's getting a bit late. So now you're worried about the time. Then he says, immediately after this, you have a meeting. So now you're worried about the meeting. Then he says, you're going to need to go and eat just now. The food is getting cold. He says, now you're worried about the food and it getting cold. Then he says, you know, there is a sale somewhere down at the other shop. You need to go and buy the stuff before it is sold out. So now you're worried about the sale and the products. And shaitan keeps on. And when the imam says, Ballin, we say, Ameen. We don't even know whether it's the end of Surah Al-Fatiha or another verse in the Quran. In Ramadan, I have witnessed the verses of the Quran that end with Ballin. There are verses of the Quran that end with Ballin. So sometimes people are sleeping in Salah, literally sleeping. And the imam is not reading Surah Al-Fatiha, but in another place in the Quran. And he says, Ballin. And guys are saying, Ameen. But hang on, this is not even Surah Al-Fatiha. This is somewhere else in the Quran. But because we are tuned and trained that once you hear Ballin, you must just say Ameen. That's not what it is. It shows that concentration is zero, zero. You cannot do that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us concentrate on the words. So I answered the young man by saying, in order to maximize the concentration in Salah, there are many remedies that we are, being, we are taught. One of them is, try and understand what you are saying in Salah. When you start Allahu Akbar, what is the dua you make? What does it mean? What am I saying? Surah Al-Fatiha, when I go into Ruku' Subhana Rabbi al Azim, what does it mean? What am I saying? Why am I saying it? When I get up, Sami Allahu Liman Hamidah, what does it mean? Why do I say Rabbana wa lak al Hamd or Rabbana lak al Hamd? Why do I say that? And what does it mean? So when you learn the meaning of it, inshallah your concentration will be maximized because now you know what you're saying. If you don't know the meaning, you just come forth and you just hear Ba'alin and you say Ameen. That's the type of Salah. May Allah forgive us. So I want you to make a resolution. I want you to promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this Ramadan, you will start learning the meanings of, the, of what you are saying in Salah. It's easy to get books online. You can Google it exactly as I, I said it. And when you get the source, make sure it's an authentic source. Meanings of the words of Salah, of my prayer, and go into it. If you want, start today so that at least when Ramadan comes, you will concentrate. Those who love or those who understand the Quran, they love the recitation of the Quran because they know what it means. They are moved by it. Those who don't understand it and don't want to understand it, they become tired when the Imam takes 45 seconds more in the units of Salah. 45 seconds more. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. We are worried about seconds and minutes. I promise you the amount of people who look at their clocks when it comes to salah, taraweeh in Ramadan is unbelievable. I think we should be having a notice on every masjid door to say, like you remove your shoes, leave your watches outside. No time must be told inside this masjid. That's it. We would enjoy our prayer much more. Leave your watch at home. Don't look at the time. This is Allah. But a lot of us time. I remember reading Salah. And I remember clearly there was a man next to me. And every little while he looks at his clock. And he's shaking his head. And I'm thinking what's going on? You're in Salah. The Imam is reading. You're looking at your clock and shaking your head. Instead of Abdullah, you've become Abdul clock. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. There are many Abdul clocks that appear in Ramadan. 
We are worshipping the clock every little while. Look at it, look at it. Yes, if there is something really wrong, like you know, for example, the Imam starts reading a long surah and he just doesn't end. Maybe you might want to raise the issue to say, you know, mashallah, you read very well, alhamdulillah. Or you want to raise it with someone to say, I think it was a little bit long because there are some old people, there are some children, there are some this and that, whatever, but in a nice way. But if for every small thing, you see, there is a hadith that says the imam must be considerate of the elderly. That does not mean he must read alif, ba, ta, tha and go down. No. Some people think because the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Imam must be considerate. So every rak'ah must be inna ta'ina kal kawthar, fasalli li rabbika wanha, inna shaniaka huwa al-abtar, Allahu Akbar, because I'm considerate of the old people, I'm reading inna ta'ina. No. That is a wrong interpretation. Look at the sunnah recitations, the sunnah recitals of all the salah. Fajr is meant to be slightly longer. Zohar is meant to be a long salah. Maghrib is a short salah. Isha is a slightly longer salah. Which means if you cannot cope because you are old, get a chair and sit. But do not let people cut down on the sunnah. I hope we've understood the meaning here. People misinterpret it. Some scholars also misinterpret it. They say, brother, you're reading too long. Brother, I'm reading the sunnah. This is the sunnah recitation. I'm supposed to be reading these surahs or this length in salah. And in Taraweeh, for example, well, let's talk about Salah and Farad first. So if you want me to, if I'm going beyond the Sunnah, you can encourage me to cut to the Sunnah. But if you want me to read Inna Ataina every single Salah, then trust me, that is not what is meant by the Hadith, which says, take into consideration the elderly and the women and the children and so on, and the sickly. May Allah forgive us. So let's become a little bit more active when it comes to acts of worship. When there is a football game, we get excited. We will watch the match up to late at night. And we don't mind. World Cup season comes the whole month. We are watching. We've got our teams. We are following people we don't know. And we are following people. If they saw us, they wouldn't even want to know us. And we're following them like they're our gods. Astaghfirullah. And when there is a season of Ramadan, which is more important than the World Cup season, we're not interested. I'm not saying you're not allowed to know what's happening with sports and to participate perhaps within, within beautiful limits and so on. You can. You should to a certain extent. But don't get carried away. Never get carried away. You understand your limits. Understand that you have priorities. Prioritize. And Allah will open your doors. So inshallah we are making some resolutions here. That we will start by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala learning what we are saying in Salah. Is that fine? Have we agreed? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I hope and pray that you will hold yourself accountable for your own yes. Maybe that's why some of us just kept quiet, isn't it? Have we all agreed? Yes. MashaAllah. Remember you said yes. When you look in the mirror, tell yourself, I said yes. I, I said yes. Let me go back. So every time you look in the mirror, remind yourself, hey, I said I will learn the meanings of salah. You will read five salah a day. I hope so. Some of us just read four and three. Some read two, some read five a week. Some read five a year. You know, when we say this, Muslims should read five salah. Some people translate it as a day, a week, a month, a year. One wonders a lifetime. Allah knows best. May Allah forgive us. It is every single day. Wallahi, the benefit of prayer is huge. It is so big that you won't believe us for you. It brings about calmness. When you can go into the prostration position known as sajda for the sake of Allah and you can declare his praise in that position and remain in there with a beautiful feeling, you see how you feel when you get up. You feel like Allah is yours and you belong to Allah. And that is the case. You feel so good. When we feel far from Allah, it's because we are the ones who've distanced ourselves. We don't want to read one line a day. I told you one line of the Quran a day, one line. It's no one can say that that's too much. Subhanallah. May Allah make it easy for us to fulfill 